Welcome back to another episode of On Fire Fishing. I'm your host Joe and if this is your first time to the show, this is a fish and dive show that does a bunch of catch and cooks. On this episode, I'm going with Cap Ron Johnson. I'll show you how we troll for papil and I'll also show you a couple surprise catches we got. All right, let's go holo holo. All right, here we go, show you the magic lure. This is my favorite, this is my go-to. This is a regular Yuzuri crystal minnow, the black on top, nice and silver. It mimics on like any kind of hallaloo or anything like that. So any kind of bait fish, it pretty much represents that color and about that shape. So anything from papil to any, even tunas bite this. So if I only had to choose one lure and one color, this would be it. And I'll show you how to uh, tie, how I tie it up and what my setup is. All right. Okay, so the equipment I use is an eight foot ugly stick with a 850 pen reel and braided line going to a four carbon, 30 pound test to the Yozuri lure. So I'm gonna tell you, show you how to uh, tie that real quick. I don't have a Yozuri with me right now, but I can just tie it onto this floater just to show you what knot I tie. So I tie a Rapala knot. So pretend this is my main line uh, my leader line, I should say, 30 pound test. What I do is I tie a, a Rapala knot. A Rapala knot is just, it has a loop in it. So that way your lure, instead of using a cinch knot and it's really too tight where the lure doesn't have a good wobble, this one makes a, a loop. So what you do is you make an overhand line, a whole overhand knot, just like that, real simple. It's a nice overhand knot. Then you're gonna go through the eye of your lure and this is works for all the swim baits, okay? So then you're gonna go back through that loop you just made. And I'm gonna leave roughly about one inch. You don't want it, the loop too big or too small. Then you're just gonna go about seven times. Okay? Then you wanna wet your line uh, with your spit or whatever, and then just break back to the hole. Pull it down. And then this is the trick too. So if you pulled it like this, really tight, you're gonna actually crease your loop and that's not good. That's a weak point in your line and it might snap. So what you do is you put your finger into the loop and then pull and then, and then slide down your knot. And then that way you have a nice solid line, nice little solid knot. And you see how like, your swivel or your, the eye of your lure, it can give a lot more action this way. Okay, since it's kind of hard to see with the mono or for a floor carving, I should say, I'm gonna just do it with this rope. Okay, so real simple, just a nice overhand knot, just like that. You're gonna go through your lure, come back up, do seven turns, then back in the hole you just made, cinch it down, dress your knot, cut this tag end off, and then now your lure really has good action and can swim like this. All right, back to fishing. Okay, let's go fishing. So what we do is I let it out. Um, if I'm going over shallow like reef areas, I try to only let it out maybe 10 to 15 seconds, especially if it's really shallow. But if you're going into a channel or behind a reef or in a bay like this, you can let it out all the way out about 25 seconds to let the your lure dive a little deeper and have a more natural away from the boat appeal. Oh yeah, on, here we go. There you go. And you wanna fish kind of early morning or right before dark. That's kind of the natural predatory feeding times. But hey, you can they can bite all day. All right, so here I'm hooked up with a nice papil. I'm just playing it kind of easy, kind of don't want it to rip the lip or fall off. Especially if you're in deeper water, you want to kind of play the fish compared to if you're in really shallow water, we could wrap a coral head, you know. So we're in sand, so I know as long as I keep tension, reel them in slow, I, I, I got them. So just keep your tip up and just reel in real slow, control it. Let him take line if he has to take line, and then bam. Not bad size. 
nice white here, we call them. So this is a Jack or Trevelle. Uh, this papillo, this white papillo, they usually travel in big schools. So if you if you catch one, try to make a big circle and circle around to the same spot because you usually hit the school. Unlike Omilus, which is the blue Trevelle, the blue papillo, they tend to only travel in pairs. So I really kind of like the whites because they the school is a lot bigger and they get kind of big. So you know anything over ten pounds is a little, but this is no a little, but this is basically dinner for me. So yes, uh, on the board again. So perfect. Look right in the corner of the mall. My daughter's gonna love this one. She probably wants to sauce this one. But this is good, fried, grilled, steamed. But I think we'll probably sauce it later tonight. All right. Nice. Yes, uh, on the hooked up, Hanapa. Here we go. All right, this one feels a lot bigger. It feels really good. Uh, good head shakes. Feels like a papillo, but we'll, we'll see what it is. But it, it feels bigger than the last one. So it's, again, right by the edge of the reef, that's what you want to troll. Or if you see bait balls or anything, try to go by that. Any kind of structure is really good to just take a swing by. So cap kind of. What he's doing is actually reeling in, but he's also jigging on the way in. So usually if there's another papillo chasing, he'll will get a double. So this is a good way to try to get a double. But if he doesn't hook up, he's gonna clear his line. That way the other guys won't tangle with you. And then he's probably gonna grab the net for me and I'll do the same thing for him. So if you ever go on somebody else's boat, ask him what to do first, but usually this is what you do. Is try to get the double and if not, clear line for the other guy and you become the boat man or the gaff man. So here we go. This one feels pretty good size, so I don't want to lose them. Here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, nice one. I'm stoked to catch this Kahala. It's actually, I thought it was a big papillo, but actually it was a pretty decent sized Kahala. But this is the perfect size. When they get a little bigger, people are really scared of them because they think they have a lot of like worms in them. But about this size, you usually don't have worms at all. In fact, in Japan and stuff, they call this Kampachi, which is such a prized fish. Uh, this is also called like the greater amberjack, but it's super good eating. But usually what I do is I end up uh, especially if they don't have worms, I just strip them out into little one inch strips and then um, I salt it maybe for a couple hours and then I'll dry it. I have a dehydrator at home and I'll, I'll dehydrate it and it comes out one of the best fish jerkies you ever ate. Ooh, yes, here we go. On a paw, on again. This one feels a little different, doesn't really feel like a papil. Papil usually would have really good head shakes. But it's pulling drag, so it feels pretty decent. And we're in deeper water, so I'm, I'm, at least it has to be a predator. It can't be some rubbish from the bottom. You know, it's not no lizard fish, that's for sure. All right, here we go. Oh god, oh god. Oh, okay. This is a chump. We call it like stick fish, chumpet fish, but this is technically a cornet fish. In Japan, they call it yagara. It is actually super good eating and there's so much of them in Hawaii, they're very sustainable. So I tried to take them home and eat them. They're really good. I mean, you can eat this in a million different ways. It's so good. But to me, sashimi is the best way. If you check out one of my earlier videos about the shikara, it shows you how to sashimi them and everything. Um, when I do catch them though, I don't like to bring in the, the whole body because it's half the body is just that long, hard head. So what I do is I dispatch him and then I actually cut off the head in the ocean. That way I just take home the body. And when you do cut off the head, um, it preserves the meat, makes the meat a lot better. And also, if these guys are really slimy if you ever caught one. But when you cut off the head, it kind of just, it just stops making slime. And then that way you can just throw it in a cooler and it's just nice and clean. So, all right, here we go. Yeah, I got one. Does Cap got one? Here we go. Yeah, here we go. 
Well, I'm getting all twisted. I don't know how I got twisted, but here we go. Let me just go clear my line for Cap. Here we go, Cap. Oh God. Nice, nice. So he's just taking his time also, you know, make sure you don't lose him. I just cleared line, make sure I, now I become the gaff man, right? So same thing, I'll jig all the way in, and if nothing hits, okay, I'm gonna grab the gaff, or in this case, the net, because they're smaller. What did he got? Let's see, it's coming up. So it doesn't look like Kofio, the way I was fighting, but we'll see. Do you see it? Let me see it. <laughs> another, another big uh, cornet fish. I mean, these things get about like maybe five, six feet max, and so this is pretty close to the max right here. So it'll, it'll make a lot of good sashimi. So my daughters are gonna be, my daughter's gonna be really happy with this. Look how fatty he is. <laughs> yeah, yo. And again, I just whack off the heads right, be right behind those little flippers, the side flippers. And there you go. Sashimi for days. So the bottom one is the peel, the top one is the yagara. Look how white and clean that meat is. I would like to say it's even better than Ono. So, hey, you guys fishermen out there, next time you catch one, give it a shot. I'm sure you guys will like it. Yee yeah, yo. Yeah. Thank you guys again for joining me on another episode of On Fire Fishing Hawaii. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or a positive comment. I really do read each one and appreciate them. And uh, just to support the channel, if you're not a subscriber yet, please feel free to subscribe. And as always, fish safe and fish with aloha. All right, catch you guys on the next one.